Hello everyone, and welcome to Lesson 17 of Objective-C on the Mac. In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing on with the memory management section, and we're going to be covering how auto-released objects work in Objective-C. So, in the previous tutorial, I ta talked to you about how if we create an object with alloc, copy, or new, those are the three magic keywords, uh, essentially, again, alloc, copy, or new, if we create an object with one of those, we are responsible for sending that object a release message so we get the retain count down to zero, which deallocates the object. So if you didn't watch that tutorial, uh, better watch that one before uh, watching this one anyway. So what happens um, when we don't want to do this and we want to use an auto-released object instead? Well, an auto-released object uh, generally will never be created with alloc, copy, or new. Um, You'll, you'll see in a bit what I'm talking about, but just think of an auto-released object as an object that is automatically released at a later point. So we don't have to worry about sending that message or the, that object a release message later on in our code. So we can kind of forget about it and we just know, hey, it's an auto-released object, we don't really have to worry about cleaning up after it. It'll do the stuff uh, later on by itself. So let's see how this works in our picture form here. And this was the um, picture that we used in the last tutorial. Uh, this just shows that if you create an object with alloc, copy, or new, uh, the object starts with a retain count of one, which always happens. But we are responsible for sending this release message to the object so that the retain count goes down to zero, and then the object is deallocated because retain count hit zero. So what's the difference between that and an auto-released object? Well, um, that's what I'm going to explain to you now. So every object you ever create, auto-released or not, um, it always starts with a retain count of 1. And that's just because uh, it's the default. Um, every time you create an object, if it's not 1, and it, if it was anything less than 1, then it would be dead. So um, it has to start with at least 1. And so every object you ever create starts with a retain count of 1, and that's just what keeps it alive. So What's the difference between an auto-released object and a, a normal object that we've been talking about uh, with alloc, copy, or new? So an, essentially an auto-released object is created and what's going to happen is this auto-release uh, method call or message is going to be sent and what's going to happen is the object jumps into what's known as the NS auto-release pool. And we've seen this in our code. We haven't uh, touched it yet, but these uh, we see it every single time we create a new project. And NS auto-release pool is created, and uh, this pool drain thing at the bottom is made as well. So um, how does this exactly work? Well, again, our object is sent the auto-release message, and what happens is the object then gets thrown into the NS auto-release pool. So the pool just holds all these objects. It's just like a big container for all these objects. And later on, at some point in time, pool drain will be called. And what ends up happening to that is just uh, pool drain just means it's going to send a release message to every object that's inside NS auto release pool. So um, basically, all objects will get sent a release message. And since object was thrown into that pool earlier on, it's going to get sent a release message whenever drain eventually runs and release will be called to object. And since object starts with a retain count of one, its retain count now goes to zero, and it's deallocated because it hit zero, and it's thrown out. So that's the essence of auto-release objects. Now I know this looks more complicated, but it's actually, um, it makes your life a lot simpler anyway, so um, you don't have to worry too much about what's going on. But this just explains how auto-release objects work in essence. So uh, if you'd like these uh, pictures to be uh, thrown somewhere, I could probably uh, throw them online somewhere if uh, people want them. But anyway, these are the pictures for uh, just kind of explaining how auto-release objects work. So let's jump into code here and see what the difference is. So how how do we actually create an auto-release object? Well, um, we've actually done it before and we just haven't realized it. So essentially, and I didn't mean to do that, um, essentially if you create any object with um, out, sorry, without alloc, copy, or new, then that object you can usually assume will be an auto-released object. So um, if we say ns string and then we say something like string with format, I'm just going to throw up an integer up here so we can use this example. 
So if we say something like string with format and we throw in current age and then just percent D, throw in age. So the key part about this is that as you can see, we're not using alloc, copy, or new. So that usually is your big signal to say, hey, we don't have to worry about this object because later on it's going to be thrown into the pool. So what happens here is string with format essentially returns you to your uh, string variable that you create here. It's going to return um, an auto-released object. So what that means is as soon as it's created, the uh, this object is going to be thrown into the pool. So again, when the pool is eventually drained, that object will go bye-bye. So that's what um, essentially happens whenever you have uh, any, mes any method uh, in any of Apple's classes anyway that are created uh, without alloc copy or new, and it's not like an init with something method, then um, whenever you don't see alloc copy or new, you can usually assume that these methods are auto-released, uh, they return auto-released objects. So this right here, we never have to worry about sending in a release message later, because string with format, again, will return an auto-released object, it's thrown into the pool, and it's just dealt with later on when the pool is drained. So now, let's uh, try something else here, and uh, let's just make our normal object. So this is our normal way of creating objects, and geez, that's not turned out right. So, uh, NS string alloc, and this is the normal way that we talked about uh, before, in it with format. And again, we'll just say the same thing. So in essence, there's really no difference in what these two look like, or um, I shouldn't say what look they look like, but they'll print out the exact same thing, and to the user, they don't look any different. So let's uh, print these both out here, and um, I'm just going to print out a string, and just print out str. And I'm just going to copy this for the sake of time, str2. So let's go ahead and we're going to build and run this. And as you can see, current age 16, current age 16, so that's nothing surprising. But what's the main difference between these two? Well, again, like I said before, this one we don't see alloc anywhere in it, so we can usually assume that it's going to be returning an auto-released object, and this object will be thrown into the pool, so we don't really have to worry about its memory, it'll get deallocated later. However, with alloc, we should say, oh, okay, here's alloc, we better, this is not an auto-released object, so we better release it somewhere when we're done. So let's just say uh, that the last thing we're ever going to do with this object is we're going to print this message to it. So now that we're done with the object, we're going to say str2 release. And now that object is released. So um, we don't have to worry about it anymore, and it's gone because, again, it starts with a retain count of 1 and it hit 0 when we call release, so that object is gone. So what about our auto-released object? Well, again, we put that object into the pool because, by default, string with format will return an auto-released object. And when pool eventually drains, uh, it, will ev it will just uh, send the release message to string, and that will destroy string. So um, there's a few uh, things you have to know, though, about uh, the differences between these two. And you might say, well, why the heck would I ever use alloc then uh, if I'm if I just have to, you know, it's an extra step if I have to release it. Why don't I just use all auto-released objects? Well, uh, the only problem with auto-released objects is that uh, when the drain eventually happens, and it usually happens when uh, the system becomes idle in some form or another, um, if you have a ginormous pool of objects, let's say you go through a big loop and you keep creating all these auto-released objects, and you have this ginormous pool. When that pool gets drained, that's going to be slow. And that's why we don't want to have this ginormous pool of auto-released objects. So usually, if you can get rid of your object when you're done with it, then uh, you can use alloc, and that works perfectly fine. However, if there's if we're just creating a free object uh, like here, and we're not creating tons of auto-released objects like in a ginormous for loop, then we're free to use auto-released objects because we don't. Um, I mean, it's not it's not a huge burden on the system. We just throw the object in the pool and you know there's no real problem with that. So 
these are just the two different ways that you can create objects and uh, for probably the most part uh, auto release objects are nice to use because they you know you don't have to worry about the memory and they'll get deallocated later on um, but knowing that see the difference between the main difference between these two is that alloc you can specify when this object is released when you call this release message it's pretty much going to be released as soon as you call it so um, essentially uh, whenever you see uh, if you're using alloc you you know when your objects are going to be gone whereas with the pool um, for instance in an iPhone application you don't really know uh, exactly the pool could be drained quite a ways down the road uh, whereas if you call release, you know that the object will be gone right away. So in terms of saving some memory, um, you can be pretty sure that um, whenever you call this release message, this object will be gone as soon as you call it. But with auto-released objects, um, they're saved in the pool, but that's not that bad of a thing. Um, but as long as you don't have tons of objects in the pool, uh, then you can be free to use auto-released objects. So, um, just another thing that I have to show you quickly before the end of this tutorial is that we can even make this technically an auto-released object. All I have to say is call auto-release on this object. So now, I just sent uh, the auto-release message to this, and now this object, str2, is thrown in the pool. So now I no longer even need this str2. I wouldn't need it, uh, since I sent an auto-release message so what that essentially do, is doing is throwing str2 now in the pool. So I don't have to worry about um, releasing it later. However, if we were going to do this, we may as well just use something like string with format to keep it more simple. So uh, these are just the basics of how auto-released uh, objects work. Um, again, the main differences, just to summarize your points here, alloc, copy, or new, those are the three keywords that you have to watch out for. Whenever you see those, you should probably say, okay, I have to send a release message to this object because again, alloc, copy, or new. So just remember those three keywords, you have to send a release message. If you're using uh, usually any other method without alloc inside of it, alloc, copy, or new, then you can assume, if it's from Apple's frameworks anyway, you can assume that it will return an auto-released object and that will be thrown in the pool and you don't have to worry about um, keeping it around. So these are the main differences between auto-released objects and our normal alloc copy or new objects. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, uh, feel, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below, um, along with your comments. And if you enjoyed these tutorials, uh, please subscribe to the channel, and more tutorials are on the way. See you next tutorial.